What is going on, Governor? It's Chiskool here, and today we're going to help you win the Mightiest Governor. And although not every governor can win this event, this guide will help you place as high as you possibly can to get those sweet, sweet legendary commander sculptures. Hello my friends and welcome back. In today's long overdue video, we'll be talking about exactly how you can place incredibly high in the Mightiest Governor, giving you the tips, tricks, and hacks that we use to make that happen. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing the subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. Today's video is being brought to you by the makers of World War Doe. Let me give you a quick peek at this game. Welcome to World War Doe, a head-to-head -head card collecting battler where you take out the opposing commander while protecting your own commander and towers. I like that in this game you're building a deck of cards, expanding your own collection, and by the way, the game has just released their very first season. You can get in on this now. This has just started where you complete a bunch of quests to get a bunch of extra goodies, which of course you know I'm excited about knocking out my bombs away season one gameplay. We've got a club in World War Doe that you can join. Come on in. The water's fine. We'll make space for new folks and the top three people that push rank in our club will get 1,000 gems and the Commander in Chef skin. The highly coveted Commander in Chef skin. I mean... Looks pretty freaking sweet, don't you think? We'll take a snapshot of the top three by power at the end of this month, this is July, in order to determine who gets those prizes. Congratulations again to last month's winners, shown here. In addition, the developers of the game are planning a competition with an upwards of a $25,000 cash prize sometime in the future. You know I like competitive gameplay. I'm looking forward to hopefully participating in that tournament down the road when that happens, and that's something that, when it takes place, you'll be able to get in on too. Thanks again to the makers of World War Doe for sponsoring this video, and look forward to seeing you in our club. If you want to download the game, you can use the link above my head. This does, in fact, support the channel. Thanks again. Let's talk Mightiest Governor. This is an event that takes place over five stages and six days of time. It happens every other week and is the main way that the kingdom will be getting legendary commander sculptures. There are 180 sculptures for first place, and then from there, the rewards drop off very, very steeply. Second place gets 90, third place gets 60, fourth place gets 50, fifth place gets 40, and so on. The reason I mentioned that these rewards drop off is that I want to remind you that this is an event where you really want to go for one of the very top placements where you go all in. You compete in this infrequently, but then do exceedingly well. That is often going to be more rewarding than placing decently many times over. Just going all in on one attempt is where your best bang for your buck will be. Now, what I want to do is go through each of the five stages and talk about how you can get the most amounts of points possible. And a lot of how this will shape out depends on the kingdom that you're in. If you're in a kingdom with a lot of spenders, you got to keep in mind that those players are there and what they're likely going to do. In our kingdom, that's definitely the case, and I know it is for many kingdoms. However, there are many kingdoms where that is not the case, and you may even be able to coordinate, regardless of the size of your kingdom, with the people that you think are likely to place in a high placement so that you don't both end up battling each other for one of those top spots. So let's go stage by stage for this event and talk about how you do exceedingly well. This again is a five-stage event. The first stage is training troops. The second stage is battling barbarians. The third stage is gathering resources. The fourth stage is gaining power. And the fifth stage is the kill event. Killing or severely injuring troops is how you will get points. The greatest combined total points will win the event. Let's start with the first phase, which is training troops. The points that you get for training troops are as follows. Tier 1, 5 points. Tier 2, 10 points. Tier 3, 20 points. Tier 4, 40 points. And Tier 5, 100 points a pop. 
Don't worry, I've done the math for you to tell you that training T5 troops is the most speed-up efficient way of gaining points. T5 troops will, however, take an astonishing amount of resources to train up, so if you are trying to place well in the first stage of the event, what you're going to want to do is go in and either train as many of the highest tier of troops that you possibly can, or even better, Upgrade your troops that are a lower tier to a higher tier. This is especially true for T4 to T5 because of the ratio of the amount of time it takes versus the uh, number of points that you gain. If you were upgrading from one tier to another, the amount of points you get is the difference between the two tiers. So if you're upgrading a T4 to a T5, it's 60 points. And the amount of speed ups is much smaller to go from T4 to 5 than it is to go from T1 to T4. And this is why... T5 players are going to have a really big advantage in this stage. A lot of T5 players will save up for at least 30 million points to 50 or even 100 million points, which is what I personally did in this Mightiest Governor taking place right now. A few hacks to help you get ahead in stage one include using items such as troop reserves. You queue up huge amounts of troops well before the training day is going to happen. That way, you can just speed up the tail end of those reserves in order to complete your troop training. Now, for those of you that don't know, a troop reserve extends the amount of troops that you can train by a set amount. The way that I like to do that is I use a 20k extender. I do my infantry, my archers, my cavalry, my siege units. I do that about a week and a half before Mightiest Governor is going to show up. And then... Boom, they're just about ready to go when Mightiest Governor rolls around. And that's like getting free speed ups, sort of. You're basically getting a lot of troops that finish on your Mightiest Governor Troop Training Day, which gives you credit for all of those troops, even though you're only speeding up a small portion of it. It's one way that you can sort of save speed ups by making your troops all finish at that one time. The downside is that if there's any events between when you queue up your 20k extenders and the Mightiest Governor comes around, you really kind of can't participate in those unless you want to actually speed up the entirety of a 20k and start it all over. Now, of course, you should try to align that troop training with a bunch of other things like a rune, a kingdom buff, being an alliance that has holy sites. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to micro-optimize the training speed. Heck, even having the right civilization can go a long way. I personally am using Germany right now, giving me 5% training speed. I'll put a card up in the top if you want a more detailed video reviewing the troop training portion of this event. It is an important one and sets the tone for the rest of the event for sure. The next stage in Mightiest Governor is going to be beating Barbarians, and the number of points you gain is going to go up depending on the level of Barbarian that you're fighting. If you're fighting a level 1 to 6, you get 300 points, 7 to 9, 600 points, 10 to 12, 900 points, 13 to 15, 1,200 points, and so on. The highest tier you're going to find in your home kingdom is going to be level 25 Barbarians, awarding 3,600 points. The level 20 uh, Barbarians are going to be 2,100 points, and they go up by 300 for every level of Barbarian beyond that to 25. Um, so you're going to get more points for battling high-level Barbarians, and if you're in the Lost Kingdom. Barbarians that are level 26 to 30 all grant 4,000 points of pop, 31 to 35 grant 4,500 points of pop, and 36 to 40 grant 5,000 points of pop. Now, why do I mention all of this? If you're in your home kingdom only, you could be selective and fight level 24s and 25s, but you're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of AP, and unless there is some other event that's taking place at that time that really benefits you, like Lohar's Trial or uh, the Supply Event where you get Legendary Commander Sculptures for Gatherers, I would say it's probably not worth spending boatloads of AP in your home kingdom. Really, the place to do that is in KVK. That's where you do it, and you get astonishing amounts of points. I pulled down north of, I think, 10 million points from battling barbarians in KVK and getting honor and aligning with, like, a Lohar event. I mean, you can do some really crazy work in KVK in the barbarian stage. There really aren't that many hacks for defeating barbarians. Uh, I'll say there's a couple things you can do if you have lots of time. One of them is to chain barbarians by using area of effect damage to get free barbarians to hit you. I'll put a card up in the top for a video that will detail that at greater length. The other thing you can do is, of course, you should be using all peacekeepers. 
I like to run around with five marches because the thing that I have is a lack of time and I need to hit lots of barbarians in a short window to try to make it all in for this event. And the other advantage for bringing lots of marches is that each one is going to score points for the event. Not only are they all going to score points for the event, but you can sustain fighting barbarians for much longer when you're using five marches. Again, use peacekeepers to reduce the action point cost, and there is general efficiency with those talents and skills. The third stage of Mighty Governor is gathering resources. This is the stage we're in right now. I've got the points up on the board. The only hack for this event is that you can send out your gatherers leading up to this event, gather a lot of resources, but don't bring them home, and then boom, turn in all those things that you've gathered right after reset happens when this portion of the event is the active stage. That way you get credit for all the gathering that took place before this stage even started. In fairness though, the number of points you get from this stage is extremely minimal relative to all the other stages of the Mightiest Governor. This is really almost a rounding error compared to the number of points that people will be pulling down in all the other stages. The fourth stage of the Mightiest Governor is going to be upgrading power. You get two points for every troop power point you increase or building power you increase or even technical power. Training troops, doing buildings, or doing research all give you, for each point of power, two points of gain. Now, this is a great event to speed up research, to speed up buildings, a couple things that you can do with that. One is to queue them up before this event happens and then speed up any time remaining for your active research or your active building. Often there are buildings like gold mines that are saved for this portion of the event, stage four, because they offer huge amounts of power for a small amount of speed ups. Same with hospitals as well. Great to save for this portion of the event to gain lots of power in a short window of time. You can train troops during this portion, but you will get a fraction of the points you would have gotten in stage one. So really, this is like panic troop training, if you will, during this stage of the event. And something you could do is use one of those troop extenders I was talking about earlier in order to have your troops finish in stage four. In that case, you, you would definitely use a smaller extender, something like a 5K or a 10K to make sure that those troops end in this stage without using a large amount of speed ups. Really the best way to gain ridiculous amounts of power and points from stage four of the Mightiest Governor where you're gaining power is really by doing lots of research and speeding it all up while there is a kingdom buff active and you speed up five, six, seven, eight different things that you're researching. The economic technology is really the best for that. The economic technology is going to be the least amount of speed ups, but the most amount of resources to gain the most amount of power. So economic technology is something you should not shy away from in a Mightiest Governor event where you're trying to do the power event and go really all in on it. In order to unlock your T5, you're going to have to max the economy tree anyways. So it's really not the worst to go in on this. And a lot of these things really are long-term investments, particularly resource gathering will go a long way for you. The final stage of Mightiest Governor is eliminating enemies. This is one day long in a brand new kingdom. And every single time Mightiest Governor comes after that, it is two full days. You get one point for injuring or killing a T1, two for T2, four for T3, eight for T4, and 24 T5. Obviously, the T5 troops are the most impactful ones to be killing or injuring, and the kill event is a really tricky thing. This is a catastrophic waste of resources for your kingdom, but the reality is that if that's how your kingdom competes and you're competing in this event, then the kill event is what you're going to have to do because people will gain outrageous amount of points, hundreds of thousands of points in the kill event alone. Yes, really, that is very, very achievable, especially if someone is doing what is called feeding. Feeding is where one person is sending out a unit that is really weak, like uh, siege units with a very weak commander, like Centurion, and basically allowing another player to go and beat it down with a very high-powered march. I mention this because you really need to be fully aware of just how many points someone can gain during the kill event. The other way that people gain really astronomic amounts of points during a kill event is to run around and kill gatherers using commanders like 
Belisarius or double C primary that have the mobility tree. They will be nearly uncatchable once they get below 50% health, and that is largely because of the charge talents, as you see here. Granting 30% extra march speed is insane when you're below 50% health. This is the fastest talent build in the game, and it is absolutely disgusting for running around and killing gatherers. You can do some serious work if you're in a KVK context. I would encourage it. If you're fighting your own kingdom, I mean, again, this just seems so counterproductive to me. You got to remember that these are the same people you're going to fight side by side with in a KVK. Yeah. Oh, really fun. Run around hitting each other's gatherers. Seems like a great way to make friends. But look, that's the way a lot of kingdoms run. And there are a lot of people who hold the mindset that like, oh, it's a war game and it doesn't matter that it's inefficient. We should just do it because it's there. And like, I get it. I get it. There are kingdoms that don't think that's a great idea and prohibit it. There are kingdoms that think that it can, can't be ever regulated and they just let it be free for all. My point is that you need to watch out even if you have a hundred million point lead. In the last hour, in the last half an hour, with the right circumstances, someone can pull down a couple hundred million points and win the whole thing. Yeah. Really, it's crazy. All in all, The Mightiest Governor is an exciting but also remarkably stressful event when you push rank. I want to mention this because if you're deciding whether or not you yourself are going to push rank, I want you to really consider, is this something that I am going to enjoy? Will it be fun for me? And, you know, some of the mystery is fun. Are you going to make rank or not? Um, the critical tier to be thinking about as you shoot for a rank is that if you make it into the top 10, you can fully unlock the commander. In fact, even the top 15 will fully unlock a new commander if it's available. And if you aren't gonna get enough sculptures to unlock the commander across however many Mightiest Governor cycles there are of that commander, then don't sweat it. They will eventually show up in the Card King. You can get them that way. And I'm gonna put a schedule up over here for the sequence of Mightiest Governor events and which commanders show up. Uh, for the most part, commanders will show up for four cycles. Four cycles means that you will have um, four times in which those sculptures are awarded before a new type of commander sculpture is awarded. We've seen that older kingdoms experience sometimes five or six cycles with a commander. And I think that the developers of Rise of Kingdoms are doing that to try to get more and more uh, kingdoms on the same cycle of commanders. And I think that's a good thing for the health of the game long term because it creates a world in which there was more sort of equal access to commanders for kingdoms that might ultimately end up fighting each other in a kingdom versus kingdom. I will be eager to hear down below what you think of the Mightiest Governor event. Is it fun? Is it not? And what are your hacks for performing well? Our kingdom arranges Mightiest Governor wins for some number of times that a new commander shows up. And we do that in order to really reward the players that participate the most rather than the ones that spend the most. We actually personally see more diversity of who gets the sculptures by virtue of uh, controlling who gets them. So instead of the same spenders winning every single time, it's now split across all the people who contribute. But that's sort of a complicated topic really for a separate video, and I'll put a card up in the top if you'd like to see my detailed description of that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Throw a like on the video and consider subscribing to see, first of all, whether or not we end up in first place for this Mightiest Governor. But for more daily Rise of Kingdoms guides to help you get value and smash your enemies. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.